हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मेरी इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस योर नाइटर चीफ इंजीनियर रवि गुप्ता टुडे वी गॉन्ट टॉक अबाउट आईओपीपी सर्वे इन टुडे वीडियो विल सी दैट फर्स्ट विल सी व्हाट आर द टाइप ऑफ सर्वे आफ्टर दैट विल सी दैट एज अ चीफ इंजीनियर व्हेन यू आर साइनिंग ऑन व्हाट आर थिंग यू गॉन्ट चेक इन आई सर्टिफिकेट आफ्टर दैट विल सी हाउ यू आर गॉन प्रिपेयर फॉर आई सर्वे ऑन बोर्ड and after that we will talks about form a and form b and we will see the difference in a form a and form b and for which type of vessel form a and form b are issued so this video is going to be interesting after watching this video i guarantee you will have a clear concept of a iopp iopp is mainly asked in a mu class exam very much and which will be beneficial for your on shore ship related service also so friend Marine Engineering Hub is a platform which make video like this, which will be benefited for you in your examination purpose and also for ship related service. So please encourage us by subscribing. Please subscribe and share our video. Friends, Marine Engineering Hub have started membership. If you want to enjoy the exclusive perk, you can join the membership. So let's start the today topic IBP survey. So before understanding the IBP survey. we need to understand that what are the type of survey on board so there are basically the survey are classified as initial survey renewal survey annual survey intermediate survey and additional survey this is a common explanation of the type of survey on annex 1 the survey and certification is mentioned in regulation 6 of marpol annex 1 and every oil tanker of 150 gt and other ship of 400 gt need to follow this survey and specification so what is a initial survey so as you can see here when a ship is constructed newly in that case it need to make sure that all the equipment of the ship is certified by the surveyor in order to obtain the certification from the surveyor they have to carry out a initial survey so in initial survey the certificate is issued for a first time the survey in this survey what happened the complete survey of structure equipment system fitting arrangement and material is done and this is covered in annex 1 so in initial survey if anybody asks you what is initial survey so initial survey is a type of survey which are carried out after the ship is constructed for a first time to obtain the certification in this survey the equipment will be checked on, on basis of its structure system fitting and arrangement and material and based on that if it comply with the marpol annex 1 in this case you will get a initial survey after that what is a renewal survey So renewal survey is a type of survey which will be carried out on a five yearly basis. It is a renewal of certification. So normally after doing the initial survey, you will get a certificate for a five year period. After getting a certificate for a five year period, you need to renew a certificate. So when the certificate will be renewed, you will be given a new certificate. That type of survey is called renewal survey. In this survey. again you will check the survey will check the structure equipment system fitting and arrangement and material that whether you are still complying with the marpol annex or not not so basically this initial survey and the renewal survey are very intensive type of survey now what is the annual survey so its word already is very clear annual survey means the survey which are carried out on a annual basis in a each anniversary date you have got a window period of 3 month before and after the anniversary date again this but what are the difference between annual survey and renewal survey here we are carrying out only a general inspection okay but here we are carrying out a thorough inspection in renewal survey now intermediate survey we are carrying out on a second anniversary date 3 month before and after and if anybody asks you what is the difference between intermediate survey and annual survey the difference between the annual survey and intermediate survey is also the intensity so as you can see 
if annual survey is about the general inspection okay now intermediate survey is about the more precise inspection and after that renewal survey is more about the more complete structure intensity so as the survey is increasing annual intermediate renewal you are raising the bar of a inspection okay now this whole survey have got a window cycle of 5 year okay so on a first year you will get a renewal survey sorry annual survey on second year you will get a intermediate survey third year annual fourth year annual and fifth year renewal so this will be the intermediate survey this will be the intermediate survey and this three these three will be the annual survey and this one will be the renewal survey okay so this is how the cycle works now if any breakdown occur in between if any breakdown occur in between the survey now what i mean to say suppose now this is a five year cycle and first and second year so suppose in between this cycle you have got any breakdown so you carry out the repair after carrying out the repair work of the IPP equipment, you need to again carry out the survey. So that survey will be count as a additional survey. So now you got a clear idea that what is the additional survey, what is the intermediate survey and what is the renewal survey. Now IOPP certificate is issued for a period of 5 year. For a period of 5 year, you will get a IOPP certificate after you found that you are following all the condition of the marble annex one now as a chief engineer you went on board and after waiting on board what thing you will check so first thing you have to check the validity of certificate which certificate IOPP certificate you have to check that the ORB is up to date means whenever you are signing on on that date the ORB is up to date by the outgoing chief engineer not after that you have to carry out the visual inspection of the IPP equipment now here you can see one IPP equipment that is the OWS so like that you have to carry out the inspection of a OWS bilge holding tank bilge wells ODME like all all the IPP equipment you have to carry out a test if it is a simulation test you have to carry a test or you have to get a visual inspection that is in good order or not you have to check the 15 ppm alarm is in here you have to check the 15 ppm alarm is coming or not is proper or not and here also you have to check in OWS we are talking about OWS okay in OWS you have to check 15 ppm alarm in OWS you have to check that you should have a spare filter on board and you also have to check for a waste oil tank capacity is proper or not that is mentioned in the oil record book you have to check the fuel consumption you have to check the sludge formation all that you have to check normally the basic rule is that you should have a sludge generation of only one percent of the total fuel consumption in a voyage so in a voyage how much amount of fuel you have consumed you should only generate sludge of only one percent okay so now what thing you will check if anybody asks you or what are the IBB equipment so you can see ORB, OWS, spare filter, waste oil tank, incinerator so these are all things you should check as a chief engineer now let's say you are on board and you have a IBP survey so how you are gonna prepare for a IBP survey so what thing you will need to check first you need to check what is the validity of your IPP certificate is within the range or not as I told you the validity of IPP certificate is for a five year period so within that year period you are falling or not after that you have to check your ORB entry sludge disposal receipt all are attached to the ORB all the entry are made in the ORB properly or not okay after that you have to check that whether the sludge formation whether the sludge formation is compared with 1% of the voyage fuel consumption or not as I told you earlier the sludge formation should be 1% of the voyage fuel consumption after that you have to check the incinerator means you have to check incinerator waste oil tank amount incinerator timing after that you have to 
make sure that all the alarms of incinerator like high combustion alarm exhaust temperature alarm door closing alarms like all that alarms are working fine or not after that you have to make sure that your OWS OWS 15 BPM alarm is working fine you have to make sure that there is no oil in the tray okay so OWS should be good order piping should be free of oil leaks so means all the piping should be neat and clean there should not be any leakage like that after that you have to lock the OWS alarm overboard valve after that you have to remove all the oil residue ticket so these main thing you have to check so basically when you are speaking about the IP sur survey friends I need to make sure you need to make sure that you first in your mind you visualize what you want to say the first thing you need to talk about the incinerator so incinerator you will talk about the alarms and trips and the function requirement the waste oil tank sludge formation the waste oil tank properly uh, monitor properly heating elements proper or not after that you go to the OWS you talks about OWS 15 BPM alarm is working or not overload wall lock or not after that you talk about ORB record is proper or not spare filter is there or not after that you talks about that whether the pipeline is leakage free or not pipeline is good condition or not then you talks about that all the operating procedure means if suppose now as you can see this is incinerator so how the incinerator is gonna be operated all the thing operating procedure should be clearly visible so this thing should be there and this thing is basically company oriented here one thing you need to check if you are applying in the USCG water US water then USCG notice should be posted near the OWS and build pump station also so these are main things you need to check after that we move to the certification now as you know as I've told you you are preparing for a survey so normally the IPP survey comes with two form so you have got three things first is IOPP certificate you will get a IOPP certificate which is common for all type of ship after that depending upon type of ship if you have if you got a tanker then you will get a form B there is a supplement form which has been given along with the IOPP certificate that is called form A and form B that form A and form B which are given is depend upon the ship type if you are having a tanker you will get a form B but if you are having a bulk carrier or other type other than tanker you will get a form A okay so now after getting all this let's see what detail you are what difference you are getting in form A and form B so first see this is the IOPP certificate from the Marpol this is the IOPP certificate so in a IOPP certificate what you are getting first you are getting that what is your definition of country which a government of which government is issuing you okay after that full definition of the competent person or organization issuing you after that your ship detail will be mentioned here after that depending upon which type oil tanker chemical tanker which type of ship you have ship other than oil tanker with cargo tank coming under regulation 2 now see annex 1 is basically for the oil tanker so if your ship now as I have told you earlier in my video that if your ship is falling under the category in that case you will given I mean suppose if you are falling in oil tanker then this thing will be cut this thing will be cut this thing will be cut and the, just only this will be there so for a oil tanker you will get the certificate so name of ship port of registry GT dead weight IMO number distinction number official number these all are mentioned here now this is the IOPP certificate now talk about form A form B so form A as I have told you earlier is given for whom for the other type of ship for other type of ship other than oil tanker you will get form A means bulk carrier container so guys if you are going in examination so you make sure what type of ship you have done if you have done bulk carrier container then you stick with the form A don't go for form B just forget the form B and if you are oil tanker then forget the form A you have to remember form B because if 
you are oil tanker guy we will see you have to remember all the form a content plus form b but if you are a non tanker then just remember the form a is much easier so the form a basically consists of particular of ship what is particular of ship this are the particular of ship mentioned six things okay after that equipment for control of oil discharge like that is a ows means of retention talking about slush tank what are standard discharge connection okay after that sope then equivalent and then compliance so these are the content these are the content of form a now let's see the content of form b so you can see the vast difference huh? the here only how much 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 only seven thing but here is almost 18 so what thing you need to remember that particular of sif control of discharge of machinery space retention and disposal of oil residue which ever i have highlighted that part if you remember that will be much for i request you to please pause the video and just write the highlighted point you are going to tell in the examination for form b okay and after that you know cigarette ballast tank double hull accident outflow intact stability crude oil washing retention on board so you can see from here means this first five point is almost same for a form a and form b till here but the sope is also same the difference is coming from here construction cigarette ballast tank double hull accident outflow intact stability crude oil washing okay subdivision see these are all the difference for the form b so now let's see the form so now we are seeing here is a form a what is a form a so here as i told you first the particular of ship will be mentioned and all the regulation will be here something mentioned here after that what will happen the equipment for control of oil discharge from machinery space will be mentioned in which you have to mention what type of oil filtering equipment you are using okay what are the type of oil filtering equipment you are following the regulation or not so if you are following the regulation 14.6 means in that case it, you have to tick this if you are following either this then you have to tick this so which of the regulation you are following you have to tick this after that here you can see that which regulation of the code means right now most of the equipment which are coming is coming with the 10749 mepc earlier equipment was approved with this so if your ship is old then you can find mepc 6033 but if your ship is new then you will find this regulation mepc 10749 so these are mentioned here now so basically part 2 talks about the ows now part 3 basically talks about the slush tank means where is the slush tank where is the bilge water holding tank from which frame to which frame your position is there what are the insulation what are, talks about auxiliary boiler whether you can burn sludge in auxiliary boiler or not if not then you will cross this if yes you can you will take this whether your insulator can burn sludge or not you will have to tick or that what what is the means of disposal slush tank where is the slush tank you have to mention that so this is the thing mainly talks about after that you can see here the seaboard emergency plan whether your ship has seaboard emergency plan or not that you have to mention okay so this is the main thing now main thing most of the student forget to mention this thing you know you have to mention in your examination that your ship in while telling the ipp content the compliance with the part 2 a chapter 1 of the polar code you must tell if you forget it may happen that survey will fail you now let's see the difference between the form a and form b so the form a is almost same in the form b additional thing will be there from the fifth 1 to 4 is common 1 to 4 is common fifth is construction in construction we are talking about segregated ballast tank from which frame to which frame this is provided what is the volume what is the total volume of segregated ballast if your ship is for the crude oil washing then where it is provided whether you are for crude oil washing or not then you have to take here whether what is the tank limitation means what is the size of a tank limitation arrangement you have after that how much oil retaining you are doing this is talking about odme is talking about odme right so this is talking about odme okay here after that here we are talking about slop tank so you can see and in oil tanker you need to talk about sbt cow tank side arrangement limitation odme after that slop tank so these thing you need to mention now one more thing 
for oil content meter you need to remember this MEPC regulation MEPC 10849 after that now pumping and pumping arrangement you just go through that after that whether you are, your ship is able to do the ship and ship oil transfer or not STS what are the compliance with the code so friend these are all the things which are mentioned in the form A and form B so I hope after watching this video you have gained that how the IPV survey will carry it out what are the content of IPV survey what is contained in form A form B what is form A form B how the IPV survey is carried out what you need to talk about in IPV survey and what as a chief engineer signing on what thing you will check friends if you watch the video till now I request to all of you please join the membership I guarantee you will gain a lot and you will clear the exam very soon friends have a good day